pieces you end in fire Then we shall all burn together Watch the flames climb high Into the night Calling our Father oh, Stand by and we will Watch the flames burn over and over The mountainside high Raise a glass of wine for the last time. Cold in our fire, prepare as we will. Watch the flames burn over and over the mountainside. Desolation comes upon the sky. Now I see fire inside the mountain. I see fire. Hey everyone, um, thanks for joining. Um, we just had to wait a few minutes as always just to let people uh, hop in and hopefully you guys aren't getting sick of that Ed Sheeran music that I've been playing for about four years, I think now, or maybe three years. Um, hey Owen. How you doing, Julian? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm good. We've got quite a few people uh, on this webinar. I think this might be our, our record uh, registrations. So yeah, well done on, on drawing in a big crowd for your, your content, mate. Nice. Well, are you sure they're not just here for a replay of Ed Sheeran? <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe because I don't think I've actually told anyone what the um, what the song is. So yeah, maybe people just come along just to listen to that. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I, although I think uh, Taylor Swift's quite popular at the moment. Have you seen her Eras concerts numbers? Pretty impressive. Stuff. Oh yeah. It's, I mean, people are going absolutely insane over over tickets um, for yeah for Taylor Swift. I'm I'm really keen on a. Uh, the festival i think it's in december and uh lim biscuit is playing and uh lim biscuit is what i grew up listening to so uh that's that's, nice. that's my my taylor swift excitement moment um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah polar opposites but uh sounds good yeah yeah nice. yeah 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 exactly yeah. um but yeah mate great great to great to have you on board um for anyone that didn't see the message in the chat or in the um the invites that were sent out um if you open the chat up there is actually a document that you can go and download um, that's just going to be the working document that we're going to be using for this session. So, um, yeah, definitely hop in and download it. Um, and if you can print it out and, and work on it, that'd be great in the webinar. So we're, we've kind of gone a different route and I know Owen, you've done these before, but we haven't done these as much with, from a build exact perspective where the webinar is more of a working session. So, um, for everyone on this, uh, webinar on this call today, it'd be great if you guys could, could give your, your feedback on, on how this goes and what what you 
what you like and what you don't like. And that helps us kind of plan our webinars and working webinars and sessions for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, I won't take it personally when we get the bad feedback. Uh, so that's right, Cameron, there's multiple files in that uh, link. What you'll find is there's a workbook and the workbook is the one titled profitable projects workbook. It's in bold all caps. Uh, the other ones are free resources today that I'm going to discuss, I'm going to work through with you on, or that we just mentioned that we would be given out uh, in the promotional sort of uh, email. So take a nosy through all of that. But the one that we're going to work through uh, most today is that uh, workbook in all caps. So that's the one that you want to open up and uh, get in front of you, or at least have a blank piece of paper to take notes as we go. Uh, hey, Brad, I will repost that in now, mate. There you go. Yeah, awesome. Maybe maybe it doesn't show people the chat history, so maybe we'll just repost yeah, it. Um, good. You know, and then again in the next five minutes or so, I would make. Yeah, awesome. I love um, the I love the branding. It's very Top Gun on. Uh, that's exactly what we've done. We've okay. gone for Top Gun. That's, yeah. I was I was yeah I was I was I wasn't sure if it was like trying to um if it was just a chance thing that. No, it was it's exactly what we've gone for. We thought we uh we thought you know hey. We get to make some t-shirts, but I don't make them pretty cool. So we thought we'll make them pretty cool. It's like, I mean, your office in the background looks pretty cool as well. Uh, yeah, is, it, yeah. It's not, is it virtual or is it real? It's definitely it's not? definitely a virtual one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah. So what's, uh, what does uh, Julian's usual office look like? Can we get the uh, behind the scenes look of without the virtual background? What are we going to go for? Yeah. Well, Owen, Owen knows what my background is already. So it's a bit yeah. of a cheeky one. But, a bit um, of hospital pass. No, and how do I turn this off now? Um, so, guys, just apologies in advance, and we will get started on this, but I'm a bit of a Marvel geek, as you're about to find out. So apologies if, if no one is into this sort of stuff. And But, yeah, this is my background. It's uh, very Spider-Man-y and there's a Batman that. on there and things. So this is my lockdown lockdown hobby, so you get to see a little bit into into what what my, my workplace looks like. Yeah, too good. I... Uh... What's the one next to Spider-Man? What's he called again? Venom. This one? Venom. Yeah. That one's nuts, huh? You wouldn't want them to fall off and hit you on the head. I think no. you'd no. empower yourself. That weighs about 30, 30 kilos, so they're pretty heavy. Yeah, it's pretty cool, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Tabitha. I agree. Way cool. Hard out. Awesome. Um, oh. What's the what's the go with the... Oh, it's um, Batman on the left-hand yeah, side. Batman yeah, Batman here. Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Venom. Is a an old dragon ball z one which i used to love as a kid so yeah, perfect my, my I'd, thing. I'd like to present my background which we're not blurry is just a calendar of what we've got coming up <laughs> at the professional builder it's nothing too exciting i like to do my i'm a big software big uh big online guy but i'm equally a big pen and paper guy so uh hence the whiteboard in the background so you know it's not yeah. as exciting as what you've got well, I, we had lockdown here, so I looked at these beige walls the whole time, and that's that's where it started from. I just needed something in there that was a bit of me. So, yeah, yeah, my my lockdown was simply um, uh, baking and going for runs. I uh, I caught the running bug, and I got into sourdough baking with my wife, which sounds pretty lame, but it was actually pretty cool. <laughs> when you had smash burgers on them and stuff. Yeah, a lot a lot of people got into that, but yeah, but baking's never been my strong point. I always muck it up, so um nikki uh recording yeah it will be it will be available so yeah you can definitely hop in and hop in and, and check that out is my audio working okay for everyone there's no issues as far as i'm aware if there Sounds is good. please let me know yeah. awesome thanks matt cool should we jump into it let's do it mate all right let me share my screen make sure that this works okay now, ladies and gentlemen, can I get a thumbs up in the chat box if you can see my screen? Is it all working for us? If not, then we've got trouble. It's working for me, mate, so it should be. Good. Fun. Thumbs up. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Ken, Tom, Claire, Craig, Mark, James, Song. Thank you very much. Awesome. So today's kind of open mic night, although I uh, don't know if we can open your mic, but the chat box is open and available. So please, any questions? Shout it out. I'm here to help. I'm here to work through that workbook with you, help you run profitable projects and help you make more money and reclaim more of your time by using BuildExact and some of the systems that I'm going to share with you today. So let's crack into it. On that link that I sent through, 
you'll see the 27 ways to make an extra $500,000 per project per week. There's actually 151 tips at the back of that workbook, but at the front, there's just broken down into 27 tips. Okay, there you go, Lee. I've just reposted the link. You've also got a top 15 tasks you should get your foreman to be doing. There's a uh, reclaim your time and leverage yourself from site area. And then we've got the sales, uh, sales uh, playbook pricing for profit tools. And we've also got at the back of the workbook, a link to take a health audit, having trouble downloading, opening the downloading files, Bruce. Sorry about that, Bruce. Uh, we'll try and hook that up. As yeah, we I'm gonna, go. Bruce, if you can send me your, if people, I'll, I'll give them, um, I'll pop my email in the chat. If you're having any issues getting into it, let me know and I'll send it to you over email. Sorry about that, guys. Send me your email directly or just email me to there. And I'll get it over to you. Nice. And then at the end of today, we also said that we would make some time available for one-on-one -on -one game plans because that's what we do. That's what we specialize as a professional builder in doing, helping members make more, uh, reclaim their time and make more money. So at the end of today's session, if you'd like some help putting these systems into place, then I've made some availability with my team over the next seven days for you to get into their calendar in either the morning or the afternoon and essentially put in place a hidden profits plan uh, where we would take some of the systems that we've covered today and we put it in line for you so you know what to work on and in what order and we can benchmark you against some of our members so you can see how you stack up but enough of all of that who am i well my name is Owen Chambers. I'm general manager here at the Professional Builder, business partner and friend of Marty Amos, who is our founder. Now, the bad news is you don't get Marty today because he sounds like shit and he's lost his voice. The good news, you get me. And I know what Bruce is thinking. Fantastic. We get Owen. You'd be right, Bruce. So for the last eight years, I've worked with uh, the team here at the Professional Builder, pretty much shoulder to shoulder with over 800 members. I've got to see hundreds of the things that don't work and a few of the core things that do work. And I really enjoy uh, putting plans in place, helping members one-on-one -on -one and making sure that they get some good results. So uh, that's a picture of me in the coast to coast a couple of years back. Uh, coast to coast, for those that don't know, is an uh, adventure race from the west coast of the South Island of New Zealand to the east coast of the South Island of New Zealand. So almost uh, just shy of 300k and uh, a lot of fun in hindsight not a lot of fun while you're doing it apart from being in uh, some beautiful country so today is all about profitable projects it's all about running making sure that we have good defendable margins every single project that we run rather than having one that goes really well and then a few that go really poorly. So what happens when you get this wrong? Well, when we get this wrong, we've seen it in the news. And type into the chat box, who has kind of been experiencing firsthand the impacts of, heck, inflation, interest rates, developers maybe putting a pause on some big projects uh, and feeling like they're feeling the squeeze at the moment. Just try, type into the chat box, who here is feeling uh, a bit of a tightening up or a little bit of, uh, you know, tough times either finding guys finding profits finding work whatever it might be yes definitely ken ellie cameron yeah 100 percent. james bruce some of the above drop 100k everywhere muhammad yeah lead conversion slowing interesting no well, we'll be able to help with some of that today david alma clint she tight a lot of builders undercutting. Yeah, 100%. And the, we don't want to be in a race to the bottom. We don't want to be taking on work just to keep our guys busy because as we're going to see with some of the exercises we do today, it's just uh, puts you onto hiding to nothing. Remember, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather go out of uh, out of business at the beach rather than building somebody else's home. And as builders, we're here to build the thing, not to finance it. So it's not our job to take on low margin work. Michelle, a lot of builders don't know their numbers so cheaper. Yes, Michelle, 100%. You've got to know your numbers. Exclusions to drop quotes and win work happening all the time. Yep, 100%, Muhammad. Okay, well, I've got good news. Uh, there is an approach that can help us avoid some of these struggles, all right? So when we get this right, we're able to potentially charge for our quotes or at least fill our pipeline up with profitable projects whether it be like Leon or Richard who are able to avoid competing on price 
and have a really good sales and marketing pipeline, or whether it be like Nikki and Corey or Brent, who focus on managing their projects through the job, protecting their margins, systemizing their sites, and are able to improve profits during a project. So for Leon, for example, what we did is we broke down his charging for quotes. We broke down exactly his sales process so that he was able to position people well, attract the right kind of leads, and take things to uh, not even to quote all jobs, just to be price checked. So first thing that we did actually here was identify his five-star prospect. Now, a five-star prospect is the right person, the right location, the right type of work, the right size of contract, and the right timing, okay? Does the contract start in six months, six years, or six weeks, okay? At what point do we want the lead to come in? So type in now, do you... Do each of you guys on the line know your five-star prospect? Yes or no, okay? I'll type in what those five points are that we would define a five-star prospect around. It's person, okay? It is oh, person, location, type, size, and timing. Ken, excellent. You've got it dialed in. Well done. So how many of your leads coming through are five star? All right. What we want to do usually when uh, identifying this, <laughs> sometimes Michelle, is get really clear on your five star leads, your five star prospects, so we can make that work. With Richard then, it looked like making sure that he wasn't competing on price. He was able to present his quote and educate and nurture somebody through so that he wasn't just taking the lowest jobs. You know, for example, in Richard's case, he was able to close at 1.32 versus a competitor in at 1.18, all right? 12% over the competition made a huge difference to your bottom line and a huge difference to your ability to be able to actually get the right projects through the door. So I think it was maybe Muhammad or somebody earlier said that they were competing on price or it was tightening up. Well, today I'm going to hopefully show you a little bit of the things that can help with that, including the information pack, the presentation of a quote, how you take somebody from cold to pre-sold and then from pre-sold to sold, right? Whether that be sold on a preliminary contract agreement, whether that be sold on charging for quotes in a world where everyone gives free quotes, whether that be sold on the actual contract itself and then presenting the quote rather than presenting it as eight pages of numbers we want to position it as uh this is the inclusions the exclusions how we help uh the timeline the budget what and what they need to do to secure their place in the calendar to get underway and the impacts can be massive when we start dialing in some process around the front end it's uh gives us the ability to sort of you know have marketing do the heavy lifting of some of the sales when we can nurture and educate people. So that's sort of the goal of having those four questions and five concerns answered in your marketing. Who are you? Who's your team? How can I trust you? And how can you help me specifically? I've got concerns around timeline, budget, trustworthiness, quality, and communication. So I'm keen to hear, I had a few people type in, Michelle generally knows her five-star leads. Sorry, sometimes knows if I saw it. David generally knows it. Who here would benefit from, you know, an information pack, a presentation of a quote as an action plan, or the process to be able to charge for your quotes? Just put your hand up. Who here would benefit from having a bit of an inspection of their front end, a bit of their uh, attracting profitable projects uh, from the very front end? Yes, we would benefit from that, says Brett. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. So, a bit of a taster of what that looks like is in the sales process document that I've got in that link that may or may not work. Don't worry, we'll get it out to you at the end along with the replay. Don't fret, we're here to help. All right, but uh, the deeper part of that is about really inspecting your, your, your sales and marketing process so that you answer those four questions, those five concerns, and you can really position, position people properly. Jasmine, Tiana, uh, fantastic. Okay, nice. But maybe you're here on the line, maybe you're here because you want to be able to run larger projects, you know, like there's nothing worse than taking on lots of jobs to hit your target turnover, but they're all small jobs. You're running around, picking up materials, dealing with subs, dealing with clients, 
Okay. You know, we can get to a hundred, we can get to a million dollars in turnover through ten hundred thousand dollar jobs or one one million dollar jobs. And you know, I think you guys would mostly agree with me that there's probably an equal amount of uh you know, there's far more work involved in the 10 projects than there are in the one project. So, you know, like Corey and Nikki, they're able to run their business semi-remotely, increase their contract size, and by in doing so, work smarter on or harder on smarter things, we like to say. Or maybe like Brett. So Brent, uh, many people do better than Brent, but Brent is comfortable sharing his numbers, okay? Because, uh, He's really proud of his results. So as you can see, all right, his top line here has increased by not too much, about 300 grand. But what's happened there is it's dropped entirely to his bottom line. Now, this isn't because he's spent money to make money. This is because he's improved his per project margins from 13.5% to 24%. Okay? So making sure that you dial in your margins is super important. Okay. Now for Brent, there's no silver bullet. There are only lead bullets, right? What we did with Brent was we got office administration help, visibility on his numbers, a better foreman. We had to move on somebody that was not performing and install a better foreman with higher accountability. Okay. And accountability we'll discuss later, but it looks like getting a really clear role scope, really clear understanding of what's acceptable, quality control, measurement of uh, of work in progress and so on and so forth. We made sure that he, we got him out of some contracts with horrible retentions. We made sure that he got his own leads in so he didn't have to do those contracts and we redid his positioning. So an information pack and a presentation of quote as an action plan. And we redid some of his website. So there are lots of things that go into this, but what we need to inspect and what we need to improve is improving your per, per project margins, margin on a project basis. We can't have one job make up for the losses of any other jobs. We want each job to pull their own weight because unlike manufacturing or other industries, construction does not enjoy economies of scale until we're over the sort of, you know, 11, $12 million mark. What we need to do is we need to have every job do pull its weight. So by inspecting numbers every single month, a couple of recent updates from Brent here, 36% margin, five mil business, 12% overheads, 26% net. Okay. Now this comes from looking at your numbers, reporting them every single month, using something like Build Exact. All right. Fantastic tool to be able to do this with. All right. But also making sure that you have the discipline to dial that in and make it work for you. Now, the resource that's in the downloads that you may or may not be able to access uh, is this one here. This one will help show you kind of the, the steps that Brent went through and Brent followed to get those results of going from 13.5% to 24%. So that would be a starting point. Is anyone else having issues with the downloads or is it working for you all now? Literally just as I said that. <laughs> Excellent, yeah. Cool. Thanks for that. No worries. I'll keep put, putting the link in every few minutes. I'll turn my camera off, mate, so people can just focus on you rather than seeing me. No worries. Oh, I, I wouldn't say you had a face for radio or anything. I think you're all right. <laughs> so a lot of these tools, guys, a lot of these tools are, help, are here to help you fast track results. Okay. You shouldn't have to learn through trial and terror and you shouldn't have to go at this alone. All right. There is an easier way. And what I want to do with you today is kind of like help build out a plan of what that easy way can look like. So what I would love you to do is I'd love you to pull up, uh, let me double check. I think it is uh, page five. Yeah, that's right. Page five of the workbook. And on page five is a roadmap. It looks like this and it helps us to identify some of the opportunities and gaps that you might be experiencing as you earn the right to grow up the builder's ladder or as you earn the right or build a strong foundation of uh, what systems to put in place when. So if you guys can't see it, I'll pull it up on screen and make it a little bit bigger. Um, here we go.
All righty. Looks like this. Can you guys see this okay? Just drop into the chat like, no, nah, not working. Or, yeah, can see the roadmap. And I'll zoom in in just a moment. Okay, nice. Happy days. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Rebecca. Excellent. So what we want to do is I'd like you to just type into the chat box now, what is your revenue level on the right, on the, sorry, left-hand side of the screen? Okay, what is your revenue level in terms of, are you at the startup, survival, stability, scale, success, or significance phase? Five to 12, Cameron, survival, stability, startups, stability, stability, scale, nice, Bruce. Jeremy, Todd, you're in the survival phase. Stability, stability, scale. All right, nice, excellent, coming through. So once you've identified the level that you're at on the left-hand side, I want you to now tell me the opportunity that you've got along the top. Is your opportunity around numbers and pricing, systems and processes, people and team, project pipeline that we've kind of just covered a little bit of, and then the leadership of self and business? Because remember, you know, half of leadership is leading yourself. You know, you can't lead yourself, you can't lead your team. If you can't lead your team, they won't be able to grow your business. So what is your opportunity next? Brian's at startup, Ken's at stability, stability, Jasmine, Michael, stability, Tabitha, stability, James, stability. Nice. Okay, cool. All right. So let me know next, what is your opportunity along the top? Is it N&P, S&P? P and P, PP, leadership of self and business. S and P, Rebecca. Nice. So systems and processes, profitable projects, profitable projects or project pipeline, sorry. Team and people, systems and processes, systems and processes, team and people, team and people. T, Yuli, I presume that's a team, systems and processes. Sometimes some of the above, but systems and processes, if have to choose one. Okay, yes, Bruce, we're always choosing one so that we can execute violently, get some results, and then come back and do the others. David Lang, all of them. <laughs> okay, but if all of them are a priority, we need to start at the bottom. Okay, so what we've got to do and what we believe here at the Professional Builder is that you've got to earn the right to grow and you've got to build from a strong foundation. So what that looks like, generally speaking, is starting with the systems at the bottom. We can't go in and install a general manager, franchise the company, increase the valuation or start having quarterly retreats for you and the family paid for. Okay, if we don't have the basics in place, things like a stop doing list, a weekly toolbox meeting, a break even calculation, your perfect P&L setup. Okay, a predictable way of generating the right kind of leads for you, a sales lookbook, or even taking care of yourself. Okay, so what we would want to do is we want to start at the bottom and install the systems at the bottom first before elevating to the next level. So if you're at stability, which a lot of you guys typed in that you were at, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to look along the stability column and then go down and start at the bottom and work your way up. So for example, stability in the systems and processes column. If your stability in the systems and processes column, rather than looking at your A to Z level one, I want us to go down into daily start standups, stop doing this in default diary for you and the team, a weekly toolbox uh, meetings, variations, process, quality control, leverage yourself from site. Okay, once we've got these six in place, we can elevate up to the next level, All right? So that's how I'd like you to audit yourself along here as we go today. Making sense, everybody? Can I get a thumbs up? Or if you're clear as mud and your day's confused and lost, then please let me know. Otherwise, uh, we're in trouble. Yep, all good. Great, thank you. Fantastic. Thumbs up, Shaka. Excellent. At this point, if you were confused, you're probably too embarrassed to sort of say it. But remember, there's no bad questions. Well, that's not true. There are stupid questions, but you're in a safe space amongst friends and it's going to be all right. All right. I won't ask any questions then, Owen. Okay. <laughs> please, Julian, uh, you can be my sounding board. If, if there is something <laughs> that we're missing here, then please uh, let me know. Yeah, no problem. We can keep going. All right. So all of those systems are a great way. Can you see my little uh, circle again now, guys? We've moved from the roadmap that I made a little bit bigger back to my slides. So I hope that looks yep. good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Mate. Excellent. So what, what you, all of these systems is like 90 odd of them, or, you know, there's 
over 100 of the systems were inside of those playbooks. But how do they all fit together and what does this actually look like? Well, to run a game, a profitable project, we need to examine it through a pre-project, during a project and after a project process, okay? Because this way we can actually keep it iterative. You can take feedback from your last project and put it into your next. It's compounding. It gets better every single project. Otherwise, it feels like Groundhog Day and you go from one job to the next making the same mistakes. Who here has gone? Who here is about to start a job and they just know that they're about to make the same mistake they just made? Maybe that's missing a variation, not pricing it correctly, uh, not allocating overhead recovery margin, not adding in a project management fee. They know that the foreman who's in charge is going to cock something up. They don't have a quality checklist in place. They don't have a clear role scope. They don't have a system for taking care of the clients. Uh, they know that their phone's going to ring off the hook. Who here knows that that's going to happen? Uh, we've all been there and it's horrible. We want to compound our systems so that they work for us and they can actually start ticking through into the next one. Yeah, Clint says, yeah, been there, done that. Okay, so I'm going to jump over this because I want us to do an exercise. All right, so let's dive into the details. Setting minimum margins. All righty. So setting minimum margins, who here even has a minimum margin set in their business? Like they know that they're not going to take any project below X and hopefully X has a two in front of it like 20%. Yeah, Rebecca, well done, Rebecca. What's your minimum margin, if you don't mind me asking? I'd love to hear it. And Michelle, excellent. 25%, David, that's what we're talking about. Rebecca, 20%, perfect. You squeeze on in there, love it. Holly, 18%, that is incorrect answer, sorry. 20%, Cameron, Bruce, excellent. We are working on that, Tabitha, well, okay. This is how you want to work on it. So, all right, perfect. So remember, there are nine ways that we can immediately inspect margin, okay? Four going into a project and five during a job. The four going into a job, pricing, positioning, sales, and marketing. You can price it at a higher minimum margin. Usually the quickest route to success, not always the most effective, all right? but we can price things more accurately into a higher margin. Positioning, we can get more referrals, more word of mouth, more people that go, look, I don't care what it's gonna cost or how long it's gonna take, I want Noel to be my builder, okay? In which case, fantastic, we want more of those leads. Marketing, we just want more leads in general because if you've got five people knocking on your door, it's much easier to say, look, mate, that's the price, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna drop my pants for you. Okay, then if you've got no leads, you're going to have to take work just to keep everybody busy. And then lastly, sales sales process is the fourth one. Okay, and it's how can we nurture, educate, position so that people go from cold to pre-sold and then pre-sold to sold and you have your marketing do the heavy lifting of the sales. Okay, so when we inspected this with Leon, what we found was that he was getting good leads, okay, but he was pricing a lot of them and he had a relatively low conversion rate, okay? It was keeping him busy and it wasn't positioning him properly. So we installed the charging for quotes process and whether you actually put a dollar figure and you charge for your quotes, that's a conversation completely different. But the process that is involved in making sure that you get somebody to a point where you can charge for quotes is what is important, okay? So I'm going to unpack some of that with you, but to start with, planning to win, we want to start with the end goal in mind. So what I'd like you to do now is either on a blank piece of paper, if this workbook doesn't work or on page somewhere in the middle, <laughs> I'll find out in a second. I'd like you to fill this one out for the 12 months from now column. Okay. So I'd like you to think, and I'm, you know, maybe we could put some more of that Ed Sheeran on or uh, Limp Biscuit or whatever's up to you, Julian, whatever, head office is allowed to sign off for us yeah definitely not limbiscuit well maybe we put in a complaint uh if we get enough people in the comments saying um boo to lincoln linkedin park yeah cameron that's not a bad uh suggestion we'll see what we can push the boundaries on see if we get cancelled you're, you're um, the one you're the one sharing it mate so you oh you, good point okay okay it's all on me all right 
no pressure okay so Speaking we'll put on. some thinking music on yeah. and if you guys can fill out this that would be fantastic i want to know what your goal is 12 to 18 months from now okay so call it christmas next year you're coming into the christmas holidays this time next year although you know we're ra rounding error i want to know what profit you need the business to make off what turnover what kind of work do you want to specialize in of an average contract size how many projects do you want to be running at particularly potentially any one time? I like any one time because it identifies how many crews we need and the structure of those crews. How many hours a week do you want to work as the business owner? Because remember, you're the most important person in this business. What role do you want to play? That's quite difficult. So sometimes it's easier to answer the question of what do you want to stop doing? Okay, what do you want to get out of? Maybe it's you want to get out of clients. You want to get out of project management. You want to get out of estimating. Okay. Get out of picking up materials, coordinating subs, picking up the phone. Okay. And is there anything else important? Pay down debt, go on a big holiday, do a specy, whatever it might be. And, uh, Sorry, Sam. I know you're a big Wiggles fan, but um, I'm not sure I can do that. All right, Brian. 500K, 5 mil log homes. Bloody the ripper. All right. Uh Excellent. So what we're doing sort of like 10 projects a year. Have I got that right? What or no, that's your net profit. So what how many projects do you want to do, Brian? And what do you want to get out of or stop doing? Four projects. All right, Holly wants to increase turnover. Excellent. We now need to break that down, Holly, and identify, because turnover is great, but what do we want to actually make, right? So like five mil is pretty awesome. Is that going to net us 500 grand? Okay. And if so, then we can reverse engineer what the margin needs to be, how many projects we need. Like, you know, for example, with Brian here to do four projects, if his sales conversion rate is 50%, then we only need eight legit uh, leads, right? And if we only need eight, let's put some put some uh, meat on the bone so that we're really comfortable. Call it 12, okay? We need 12 leads and we can then identify the right systems and strategies to get your 12 leads, Brian. So Holly, I just uh, encourage you to break why you're doing five mil down into your net profit, type of work and so on and so forth. Okay, cool, 340 to 500 okay love it holly excellent six to 12 mil 12 percent net alex all right nice 12 percent net's a good sort of golden ratio generally speaking what we want to see on your ratios is a, a 10 to 15 percent okay let me start at the top so generally what we want to see on your net on your ratios is 20 to 25 plus percent on gross profit your expenses are going to come in at anywhere between eight to twelve percent we might accept a little bit higher if you're going through a growth phase or if you're in a startup phase in the first sort of three three years. And then your net profit wants to be between 10 to 15%, okay? Which is why the most important number in your business is your margin because high margin businesses win. They're able to invest into stuff and make shit happen versus uh, dropping your pants. All right, Sam, this is good. Mr. Wiggles has come in clutch and given us a really clear understanding of what he's going for. 500K net, 4 mil, high performance architectural, 800K average jobs, five jobs at one time, 30 hours a week, roll sales and GM, buy commercial asset. Love it, Sam. You got a really nice plan there. Um, what am I calling expenses, Paul? I'm calling expenses your overhead. Okay, so all your fixed costs, insurances, phone bill, vehicle, um, Salary for people off the tools, okay? So typically like a project manager being expenses, an office administrator, your salary for all the sales and marketing and other crap you might end up doing, uh, hiring, firing, people management, okay? Um, 
advertising, marketing expenses, all of your cost of goods sold, which is going to be your labor materials and subs, that's going to be up in your uh, cost of goods sold and not in your expenses. So hopefully that answers your question there, Paul. Brian, I get eight leads a year without doing much prospecting, not the right prospects though. Yes. Okay, cool. So Brian, if you're not getting the right prospects, we're either fishing in the wrong pond or we're not answering the right questions. So you want to go back and you want to go, is my marketing answering the four questions and the five concerns? Who are you? Who's your team? How can I trust you? How can you help me specifically? I've got concerns when building a log cabin around timeline, budget, trustworthiness, quality, and communication. Awesome, guys. Hopefully, you've all had a crack at that and it is making sense. If we don't plan to win, right? Like, what's the point? We're not really going to be able to get out of this what, what we're after, you know? A lot of people don't slow down, pump the brakes and go, what do I need to stop doing? What do I need to get out of? And then be really surgical with the systems they put in place and the areas of uh, that they need to spend attention on, okay? Otherwise... If you go back to that roadmap document, I think somebody posted in, it's all a priority. Okay, if it's all a priority, then fuck, where do I start? But if we then go and we plan to win, and now we go back to that document, are the are systems you identified still the same systems that you want to put in place? Now knowing exactly where you want to go. Okay, what we want to do is we want to set a super clear vision of the business and then build that business really deliberately. When we do that, it feels great. When you're in a period of winning and setting good uh, goals, then happy days. We can chase after those goals really clearly, just like Alvin and David, just like Warren and Ray. Making sure that we know what we're gunning for is super key, okay? Now, we don't have a horse in the race at Professional Builder. We don't really care if you're wanting to build a two, four, six, eight, twenty-four million dollar company. It's not our job to tell you what business to build. Our job is to help you get there faster. And we're normally bridging one or two gaps. We're either bridging a knowledge gap or bridging a time gap. People will come to us and they go, look, I just don't know what I don't know. I've been taught how to be a great builder, but I don't know how to be a great business owner yet. Or we're bridging a time gap. Look, systems, processes, all that stuff. I want to do it. Makes sense to me. I know I need to do it. I just want to get it done and one year instead of two years and they want to halve the amount of time it takes them to get there so set a goal chase after that goal and make sure you get the right systems in place brian is back all righty i need help with everything too systems and process would just help keep uh from scaling a turd yeah oh, wow 100 and that's where this part comes in brian because you're bang on the money we can't scale a turd all right, you can't scale lack of margins, shitty cash flow, and poor profits. Okay, that's why the first thing we need to do is really look at things on a project to project basis, get super clear pipeline in of the right projects, get super clear what we're, what's on screen now, core systems to run those projects well, and then make sure that the Lessons and learnings compound with your people and compound with your process so that you can don't repeat the same mistakes each time and you can scale profitable jobs. Otherwise, we're scaling top line, five to 10, 10 to 15, with shitty economics in the middle. And uh, you end up with, like you said, a turd. It's horrible. So what's on screen now is typically what we would want to inspect during a project. Get some really clear financial visibility and accountability in place. So let's start, I'm actually gonna start with uh, point three here, which is like management and job costing and stuff. Who here has a, you can call them whatever you want, site manager, foreman, project manager, but somebody that's in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the projects, okay? Who here's got one of those or are you that person? James says, yes, I have one of those, excellent, nice. Yes, yes, yes. David is, is himself. All right. I'm that, says uh, Noel. Uh, yes, mostly Michael. Okay. We're every person, Michelle. No worries. I'm that guy. Been uh, 
Who's that? Clint, I'm that guy. You've been watching too much um uh David Goggins. You don't know me, son. Uh Jasmine, we did, but not anymore. Oh, okay, Jasmine. Hopefully you've got somebody in, or maybe you've come back. Claire, two four and one project manager. Excellent. All the hats. Okay. So this one's a write it down. Get a pen. I want you to write this one down because if you take nothing away from today, I want it to be this one. All right. And it's that most businesses don't lack systems, they lack accountability. Okay. And accountability is an equation. Accountability is expectations plus measurement times by feedback. So if we've got somebody running your projects, they are arguably the most important person when it comes to running profitable projects every single time. The person that is in charge of driving labor, coordinating subs and schedules, talking to the client so they don't miss variations. They know what constitutes a variation and what uh, is outside of the scope of works. That person needs to have clear expectations, clear measurement and good feedback from you guys. All right. So what is measurement? What does expectations, measurement and feedback look like? Well, it starts with the form and top 15 tasks. Okay. It starts with getting real clear systems and processes for the foreman or the site manager or the project manager, whoever, to be very, very accountable on site. Can I, can I repeat that? Okay, sorry. Uh, so accountability equals expectations. So expectations is like what your week looks like. Your expectation is that you talk to the client. You constitute, you know what constitutes a variation. You understand the plans. You uh, know what your responsibilities are. So the owner shouldn't be turning up to site, setting the site up, packing the site down, sweeping the site, filling the jumbo bin. And I agree, that shouldn't even be the foreman. That should be the apprentice. So each person needs to have a really clear set of expectations. I need you to do X, just like you as the owner should be doing margin activities, those four on the front, okay? So accountability equals expectations plus measurement. And initially, measurement is just, are those expectations done or not done? They're either done or they ain't done. And then eventually, those expectations move towards timeline, budget, quality standards. Are we to timeline? Are we to budget? And do you get your bonus? And are we to quality standards? And then we want to times that by you and your ability to be a strong leader and a good coach for your team. Ability to course correct them and give them both formal and informal feedback. And formal and informal feedback comes in the form of daily stand-ups, uh, performance reviews quarterly, but also scorecard reviews of their expectations, either weekly or bi-weekly, depending on if they're a gun or if they need to need, need real hand-holding. Matt, the iron triangle, time, cost, and quality. Yes, who has heard of the Mumbai bus driver scenario? They incentivized the bus drivers to finish their routes on time. And overnight, all the routes were finished on time, but they didn't pick any people up. We can incentivize on timeline, <laughs> but if we don't parlay that into quality, we're going to have a bunch of Mumbai bus drivers. And that's not what we want. That's not what we want. So you bang on the money there, Matt. Cool. Okay. So we often, let me repeat that, don't have a lack of systems. We have a lack of accountability. We want to really dial up the notch of accountability for our foreman, our project managers, and our site managers, the people that are in charge of projects. And if that is you, then start holding yourself to a higher level of accountability by setting an expectation of the role, by measuring whether it's done or not done, or timeline, budget, and quality standards. And then having a communication rhythm, which is daily, weekly, and quarterly on whether they're on track or off track. Your job is to coach, course correct, and provide them with help and assistance. Kind of using the PSR principle, problem, solution, recommendation. So when any, anybody comes uh, and gives you a call, like uh, these people on site, you want to go pump the brakes, buddy. 
what's the one problem? Don't come to me with multiple problems. So one, P, one problem. Three solutions, so that you've actually thought about it. What are your three potential solutions? And then one, what is your one recommendation? And it's your job to help them make the right decision or recommendation at the end. It's not your job to identify the problem, come up with the solutions and decide on the recommendation. It's their job to identify the problem, come up with the solutions, and it's your job to help them make the right decision. And that's that feedback feedback part. Is that making sense for everybody? I kind of deviated a little bit there, but I think it's useful for that point three. Um, and make, uh, you know, it's you know more of that management side of it that often gets overlooked. Awesome, Bruce. Cool. Glad it's helpful, David. All right. I'm I'm gonna go backwards then. So we'll go to two. All right. S main platform. Look, if you you guys all here, you should be all using Build Exact. All right. Gives really clear outline of um your pricing, your work in progress, all that sort of stuff. So you get clear and visible reporting and job costing during a job. And that's going to help with that second part of the equation, the measurement. But also if you can't see the scoreboard, how are you going to tell people to get with the program? You need to have a scoreboard that is reviewed and reported uh, as frequently as possible. Um, hey Owen, just to, just to add to that, mate, there's um, for you people that are using Build Exact, um, there's, there's a whole range of reporting features coming for job costing. So I think we're probably about a week or so away from that happening. I think it's just, just a final um, testing with um, with exact accounting on how the formula uh, formulas are used and created. But yeah, if, if you guys are using Build Exact, keep an eye on the next week or so. Um, there's going to be some significant changes to how you can view your job costing and um, profit and you know looking into the future based on what, what you do today, what impact has that got to your profit margins that are kicking in? Um, Ken, um, what I'll do, mate, I'll reach out to you because I'm sure I have your email there. So um, yeah, we'll see if we can get, get you some help. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect, Clint. That's what we like to hear. Nice. All right. And then I'll go back to one, kind of done this in reverse, but we need to make sure that we have a really core reporting uh, back end and exact accounting. We've done stuff with them as well. We love working with them and they recommend the same stuff as well. So at a bare minimum, what we want to do is we want to make sure that every single month, and this is something that therefore repeats and recurs, so should be delegated to your team. Okay. Because it repeats and it recurs and it follows a similar system every month, generate these reports. Okay. We want to set this up so that we can get a clear report for the golden ratios for the perfect PL for your cash flow forecast and also your balance sheet if you're looking to really scale fast and uh, make some damage to your and by damage I mean fucking crush it uh, sort of thing. So that's what we want to be seeing every single month as well. Plus good bookkeeping service equals number one. Nice. Awesome, Ken. Jim, great advice. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So a lot of this back end stuff of managing a project while it's going looks like some, honestly, some actually some basic things. If we get the basics right, like experts never don't do the basics, right? So the best people in, in our industry never don't do the basics, right? I've come from a, a sports background. Okay. And even at the highest level, all the best still warm up they still cool down they still go and do their uh strength and conditioning they still do pre-season okay they always do the basics so so kind of the 80 20 of this often looks like taking real clear accountability of the foreman or the project manager or the site manager whoever is running your day-to-day -day projects that looks like getting clear measurement in place and clear expectations in place we call them scorecards Okay, we have one for every position, but you should make sure that there's one for every person in the business. Call it a job description, call it a scorecard, but it needs to just basically set up very clear expectations. We want to get really clear on managing the client. Okay, so we have a what's called a client weekly wrap process where we make sure that the client is in the loop, understanding, and that we're not pinning the relationship either on the owner or on the person running the site daily. 
or I'm the person sending the invoice weekly, okay? We're making sure that the relationship is held by the company, not by the individual, and then at the mercy of that person. And then obviously the reporting side of it that we've just covered, okay? All righty, how are we for time? Oi, all right, let's get a move on. So, ladies and gentlemen, A to Z of operations, this is the third and final part. Now, what's on screen is a bit of an example, and you've got another example in your workbook. But essentially, what your A to Z of operations is, is how a lead flows through the business from beginning, initial inquiry, to code of compliance, handing over the keys and asking for a testimonial at the end to make sure that testimonial gets on your website, okay? What we want to do is we want to compress these stages so that there's a who and there's a how. This should be the working set of drawings for your business, okay? You wouldn't go and build a home without a working set of plans. I don't want you to build your business without a working set of plans either, okay? So what we would want to do is we want to put a who, ideally not your name and a how invoicing purchase orders variations site setup qualifying of lead information pack presentation of quote whatever it might be next to each of these uh, phases we want to customize this for you and make sure that it is unique to your business and the goal should be we take you out of potentially 100 percent of day-to-day -day operations to 75 to 50, to 45, to 20. So type into the box, who feels that they are part of, oh, how, what percentage do you guys feel you're part of in terms of day-to-day -day operations? Is it 20%? Is it 100%? Is it 50%? <laughs> okay, shit. All right. So you're not going to be in a position to elevate above the business and work on and above it if you're down in the day-to-day -day of it. So we need to identify what are the low dollar repeating and recurring tasks that we can systemize and delegate so that you can elevate. But don't we all start at 100? Yes, you do, Muhammad. We 100% all start at 100, but it's identifying what's the low dollar repeating and recurring tasks that you can automate, eliminate, delegate, or outsource so that you can work on the high value tasks and typically your role as a business owner is to run profitable projects sound like a fucking broken record and that means that your job description is nine main points pricing positioning sales and marketing controlling labor materials sub trades variations and contracts okay you might not be the one that does that but these are the levers that you have available to you to maximize margin Okay, and we want to then set scorecards or job descriptions for each person below that so that you can go from being 100% involved to 85% to 50%. And we know business is dynamic. It's always changing and people might leave and come and go and it changes, but we want to build a business that is a collection of systems and then people that run those systems rather than a busy job with overheads. So it's a bit of a journey towards your idea of mastery, Muhammad. But that's why we go back to the very beginning we plan to win. We make sure that you've got a really clear, vivid vision of what business you're building. All right, Brian's 100%. David's 100%. Ken, 70%. Michael, mate, how good? 20%. That's what we're talking about. No, 80, 80, 100, 100, 80, 120, Cam. Okay, I'm not sure. I didn't really think I'd need to explain math here today, but 120 is more than 100. <laughs> you're going above and beyond, baby. Excellent. Okay, Cam, but we want to work harder on smarter things okay so we want to identify what your heart uh, what your smarter things look like can hard founding finding good people too bloody right and that's why uh we want to set really clear role scopes okay and then spend good time and effort and attention on finding those people most people i'd i'd, I'd ask you this just as i triage because you know maybe it's a attracting people problem maybe it's a hiring them on the right package problem, or maybe it's an onboarding them correctly problem. I don't know. Uh, but Ken, how many hours and how many dollars have you spent on marketing your business for people, not just for projects? So that just my first question. No. Okay, there we go. Okay. I think I might know why it's hard to find good people in. So we want to position your business just like we would position it for good projects. We want to position it as an epic place to come and achieve their dreams. 
right? Remember, your job as a business owner is to not just hold, one of them is to do the, the margin, but it's also to have a big enough vision that everybody else's can sit within it, okay? So you want to have a big enough vision that can set everybody else's vision within it and their career progression, okay? So what we did with Alvin was really simple, okay? He wanted to go and take a week uh, holiday in Europe. So we went back to his A to Z of operations, okay? We identified all the red lights that would break if he were to go away. And then we worked out who and we worked out how and managed to get him off to Europe. And while he was away, Emily, his office manager, was able to make a sale. Absolute weapon, straight out of university, awesome chick, 22, 23, 300 grand uh, sale for an extension. Now, this is kudos to Alvin, awesome to Emily, but this is because you have a system and a process in place that you are able to execute. So we're kind of short on time, but what I would like you to do if you have that workbook is use a traffic light system, okay? I'd like you to use a traffic light system by going through... Let me pull it up on my screen. Here we go. So this is an example one. But what you'd want to do is you want to go red. What are the areas that are proper broken? Orange. What are the ones that need a little bit of help but are okay for now? And then green. What are the ones that I could pass to a person? And there is a system in place. So we're then building the job description of the next person that we hire because we have all these green ones and they all happen to be administrative or they all happen to be um, apprentice or site manager or whatever. All right, guys. Man, we moved fast. Hopefully I've squeezed it all into that hour. Apologies for going a little bit over time. But type into the box... What's been your main or biggest takeaway so far? What uh, has been your BFO, blinding flash of the obvious? Where you gone? Fuck, that's pretty damn obvious. Uh, makes sense. Do you advise 20% plus margin on costs and jobs? Claire, okay. I would love to help with breaking down your pricing stuff. I'm not sure now is the best time to do all of it. What we advise is that when we look at your PL, we must be achieving a company wide 20% plus gross profit. Okay. And on a project basis, we want to be achieving the same 20% plus on your gross profit. If you don't have a two on your GP, then we don't have enough on it. Uh, Tabitha, need lots of help. Uh, David, flowchart, flowchart, got the got to get the systems locked down, Michael. Well, yes, you do. But also remember, you don't build your business, your team do. So you should set, it should be like a 10, 80, 10. You set the system up first 10%, you get them to do the middle 80, and then you come in and do the course correction on the final 10%. Okay, so get the systems locked down, mate, use some of our templates, get some help, use what, uh, do a S&D, S &D, swipe and deploy. All right, and then get it over to your team so that they can get it in place as well. Importance of accountability, Cameron. Uh, freaked out by how much I've got to do. Help, no worries, Ken. You know, we're going to eat the elephant one bite at a time. Uh, gross profit includes project prelims. Uh, again, Mahalud, uh, probably need to break that down with a bit more of a clearer question for you, but um, your gross profit needs to be above 20%. Our overheads should be between eight to 12 typically, and then 10 to 15 for net. Where can I get the round wheels? <laughs> Play to win. 100% no, we're not here to take part. We're here to win. You know, I don't want to leave your financial future with your family, your team, your community up to referrals or what the market might do. Own the problem, go and own the solution. Need help with everything, accountability and reporting. Hmm, where do I start, Michelle? Any other responsibilities, process and procedures, thumbs up from Michael. All right, cool. Well, guys, I'm glad that you got some stuff from today. Jim, those percentages, 20 to 25, 8 to 12, 10 to 15. Okay, you can start writing those reports and build exact zero, start reporting on them weekly. 
Okay, sorry, monthly at a bare minimum, ideally weekly. And remember, because it repeats and recurs, we want to set the office manager up with a real clear report on how to do that. Awesome, guys. All righty, so hopefully you got a lot to digest, percolate, start working on, okay? Uh, now, you've got an option. You've got a choice at this point. You can go crack into it yourself, which is all good. You should have enough today to be able to go and do that. Okay, you should have enough to go and conquer the world, set out into the wide expanse of the ocean and have a nudge at it. But also, if you'd like some help, then like I said at the beginning, uh, we've got some time available. And I've made that time available with my team over the next seven days in the morning and in the afternoon for that game planning session. So what we'll do is we'll do three main things together. We'll find some of the hidden profits in your projects, whether that's around labor materials, subs, variations, contracts, pricing, positioning on the front end, sales and marketing, okay? Whether it's your foreman, your owner, your client. What we'll then do is we'll identify your idea of success and do some reverse engineering of that. And then we can help tag you with some specific strategies and get a game plan in place that you know what to work on and in what order. Now, there are some prerequisites for this. We're going to need to examine your P&L with you so that we can actually cut between the shit and get on the same page as you. And we can actually give you some clear and good advice. All right. And then we'll work through those four levers to make sure that you know what to work on and what's going to be your biggest leverage point, whether it be, you know, controlling labor, improving your sales conversion rate or whatever it might be. Now, what we'll do to start with is those times are available to everybody, obviously. Uh, it's completely free. It's no obligation. You can get to the end and go like, hey, thank you very much for that plan. See you later. Or if you get to the end and you would like some more help, then we can look at the programs that we offer here at the Professional Builder and we can get you underway. It's absolutely, like I said, no obligation. But the first thing that we would do is get you to talk with one of my team. Okay. You can scan the QR code there. You can visit call TPB. Okay and you can book a time. I'll post that into the chat box. Now, let me see. Got some homework, Clint. <laughs> nice, excellent. All righty. Awesome, mate, that's been, that's been great. And you know, you used a sport analogy there. And I think um, from, I've been at Buildings Act for five years now, and I, I go to events and, you know, up and down the country. And every time I go, there's always people there that will, come over to me and be like, oh, I've been meaning to come and speak to you um, about something. And they might have been meaning to do that for two months and they might be using Build Exact or not using Build Exact. And it's one of those things I'm like, you can just shoot us an email or book in a call whenever you want and we'll we'll speak to you. So I think, you know, it's one of those things sometimes where people, I think it's just about doing those, those really, really simple um, things and getting in, when you have a question, get it answered straight away and focus on, on getting it done like every time i have a session there's always people ask me like how to how to help them use build exact and things like that and i'm like just book in a time if you're using build exact go into the chat with us button you can actually book in a time and you can probably get a time tomorrow or the next day um to to go through that and i mean you use the sport um example then it's one of those things i know um football or soccer isn't isn't the biggest sport in australia when it's actually the most played sport and obviously i'm english so it's a huge sport for me and one of the things is that you know when you play football a lot of people try and do the really complicated stuff the the skills and the tricks and all that kind of thing and most people don't make it in football doing that it's the simple stuff it's getting your head up looking for a pass and making the pass whenever you, whenever that option is open. And sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of the thing with, with what we find with builders is that I think you get so bogged down in everything that you try and do the flashy things that you think are going to get you, get you where you need to go and kind of forgetting all the foundational stuff that, that come with it. So, yeah. you know, not I saying building exact is going to, going to solve every single problem that you have, but allowing build exact to do some of the basic stuff for you and give you visibility can help you make better decisions in your business. So whether it's just better reporting capability, so you can, so you know beforehand when you're running over budget, you can now start making better decisions on asking for longer payment terms or, or things like that. Um, it might be just that it reduces your time on the admin work. So now, you know, I think it was Ken that mentioned, now I've got less time on admin. What can I do? Well, I can, I can do more promotions in terms of getting the right people into 
um, into my company to work. So I've got more time to hire. I've got more time to train. I've got more time to coach. I've got, you know, so, you know, software, I think a lot of people sometimes look at and go, oh, I'd love estimating software to help me with this particular thing, but it, it really goes and, you know, and helps in other areas. And, you know, whether you use us or someone else, um, you know, that's obviously your decision. Obviously I would say we're the best choice for, for the type of builder we look after, um, but just use something. 100%. Exact, that's exactly right. Like we, we we operate in a complex enough industry already. Subs, clients, contracts, you know, councils, team members, you know, weather delays, material delays, COVIDs, whatever it might be. We don't need to complicate it by trying to, you know, reinvent the wheel or do something ridiculous. We just need to get the basics right. And, you know, at the risk of oversimplifying that, it's just making sure that we have our guys set up properly we start with a profitable project before we even start the project and then we make sure they get the right systems for reporting tracking it measuring it course correcting it that's exactly right and you know builders that does a great job of that and then there's you know operational execution around that of who to hire how to train them how to get them up that we kind of specialize in yeah. um uh david can you confirm 15 minutes free or 90 minutes so all free we just like to do a 15 minute chat so that we can you know get your PL so that we can get prepped and so that we can pair you with the right coach for your call because if yours is systems and processes focused then you know, versus uh, numbers and prices versus team and uh sorry versus you know sales and marketing then we just want to put you with the right person so you don't waste your time yeah just some comments on some of the the chat here um owen so um asua hopefully i've got that that name pronunciation right but um yeah 2a zero integration that that is coming zero is gonna be the first cab off the rank i believe they're working on that as soon as the extra job costing stuff comes out so you know pro i can't guarantee when but i would assume probably before the end of the year um yeah and so you mentioned about um the hub doc side of things so i think what the plan is is that once the two A zero integration happens. Obviously, HubDoc would go into zero, and then zero push into build. Is that? I think that's the plan. Um, so, if you want more information? Reach out, and I can put you in touch with the the team. Um, Claire, regarding the mobile app. So, for those of you who don't know about mobile app in in Build Exact, that's kind of in like a beta at the moment. So, technically, you can go in and download it and actually use it. Um, and what it does, it connects your site diary um, into your Build Exact account. So, you can invite. You know anyone that's on site into the uh, into the app it's all free so you don't need to pay for additional users for that um and it's almost like a facebook news feed on your job and that feeds directly into your build exact someone out on site your tiler for example takes a picture of the finished tiles in the bathroom uploads it to the client uh, uploads it to the site diary someone can then go in and upload that to the customer portal so there's none of that send me the photo add it onto an email, send it to the client. It's just streamlined that whole process of how you communicate. And ideally you want to be using the customer portal to communicate if you can, just because anyone can jump into it and see things coming back and forth uh, from it. Um, awesome, Tabitha. Thanks for the thanks for the feedback. I'll let the team know. Um, yeah, we try and get back to people as, as, as quickly as possible. Um, I would say to anyone that is looking for support, just get in and book a, book a time with the, the team. They're really... Um, they're really helpful of, of getting stuck into it. And we do have a bunch of other partners that help people use Build Exact. So obviously Owen and um and the TPB team um help you from a coaching perspective and getting your business really um streamlined and, and working for you. And then there's we do have we do work with people like estimators and stuff that can go in and actually get into the nitty-gritty of getting your correct pricing in and building your recipes out and things like that. So definitely lean on the people around um around your business to help uh david owen's saying that um sorry owen <laughs> david is saying that he's trying to book a call but none are available oh no uh david why don't you uh message me directly with your number i got 10 minutes free straight out of this i can shoot you a message uh text or i can give you a call sort of thing if you want to message me your number directly you can do that i will awesome um and for anyone else that's still on here we still got just under 100 people still on which is great um if you're not already on the build exact facebook page would really recommend joining it so it's not the business facebook page it's actually a group um so i probably use the wrong terminology there it's called the build exact building block um so that's a facebook page or group 
sorry, <laughs> with a bunch of our subscribers in there. We've got a bunch of our partners in there. It's a really good um, source for getting in and asking for um, advice on what people are doing. Um, so we have a lot of builders actually answering questions for other builders and sharing how they use things. Because the good thing about Build Exact, we don't keep you very rigid in terms of how you want to do things. We have people that do things in a variety of different ways and things that I'm still learning now. Um, so it's good to get in there and ask for advice. So that's the Build Exact building block. Um, so Owen, if you're not in there, mate, definitely, definitely hop in and, and join. Um, but yeah, um, just want to give you a quick update on things that are coming. So obviously, um, hopefully most of you have seen the Hazaco integration. So that, that is there now. Um, so we uh, have documents coming in from Hazaco, like your swims and things like that. So definitely make use of the connections there. Um, we've got obviously our supplier pricing, which hopefully a lot of you know, you know, Bunnings and Mike Tens and things like that. But there are there are also um, some of our pricing kind of buying group partners. So like ABN are in there and they have a bunch of different um, bunch of different suppliers all in their list. So they're, and I believe Trade Alliance Group and uh, RBN, Registered Builds Network are gonna, are gonna come on fairly shortly um, on that. The 2A0 integration, the extra cost tracking stuff and the mobile app. So a pretty big run of features over this sort of six months or so. So definitely go in and, and check it out. Um, Brian, I guess it's, we're not necessarily thinking about competing with with Builder Trend. Builder Trend definitely kind of go after the bigger builder, and they're not they're not in Australia either. Um, well, they're not properly in Australia, um, and I don't think they've any got anyone on the ground in New Zealand either. Owen, you might be able to clear yeah. that one up. But I think Builder Builder Trend go after the bigger uh, customer. We we're very um, focused on the smaller resi, small to medium resi builders. Um, Obviously, as we get better and we add more to the software that works for Resi builders and things that people want and ask for, we start to, by default, kind of drift into their territory a little bit. But it's not really a, a kind of a conscious thing that we're trying to go out and trying to compete directly with them. We're just making the best software we can make with features that people ask for. And if that takes into that territory, it takes into that territory. Yeah, Richard, I think that's a, I don't know too much about this, but yeah, I know the the tax side of things isn't, isn't great from a, um, a builder trend standpoint, but yeah, I, I try not to get too stuck into what other, you know, competitors are doing. I think that's definitely not the right way to, to go about it. We just focus, focus on ourselves. Yeah, David, the, 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 the two A zero integration is coming. So I would say that's in a couple of months or so. And um, yeah, you mentioned the the price rise side. It's actually if you pay annual, it's actually gone down in price. So you can it's actually cheaper to go with the annual option. And most people don't cancel. So if you if you go the annual route, you actually save yourself a bit of money there. The savings that you'll get from the uh, improvements in time savings. I mean, like what's your hourly rate? You know, saves you six six hours a week, and then we're off to the races. I think it's again identifying what kind of business you even after. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, Cameron, you mentioned there, um, I believe that is going to be added into the site diary stuff at some point. It's one of those things where we we um, we build features, you know, what's, what's the minimum we can build to get the most value out of it? And then over time, we, we add on and add on to that. Tanya, I believe you can do GST in inclusive and exclusive. Um, Yeah, Brian, the, the pricing, I believe, is really expensive with Builder Trend. And if you're using all the features and you're getting the most out of it, it, you know, it probably doesn't work out to be that expensive. But if you're not going as in-depth as what Builder Trend allows you, it's probably some wasted money there. Um, but yeah, there's been a heap of changes. Um, I mean, our, our product team is the biggest team in the company. So it shows that, you know, most of our money goes in actually developing that product out. And then yeah, Ken, you'll definitely save the time. Just um, just put in that time and and work at the start. Um, and you know, to get set up, if you want to sort of save that time and get the most out of it at the very beginning, you know, use an estimator. We've got a bunch of them. You know, I'll reach out to you after this. And there's a lot of time savings that they can help you with in terms of building your templates and your recipes and stuff for you, so that you can focus on, you know, getting into your business and doing a lot of the stuff that, you know, maybe Owen is is recommending you get in and do so. We've also got a joint workshop coming up again, Julian, September the 28th uh, 
for all of our members. Very excited about that. Yeah, um, so we'll be able to unpack a bunch of the stuff again uh, in some detail with uh, how it can really be optimized, which I'm very excited about. Um, can that outsource formula is how Brad and Dan bought back 24 hours a week for themselves. They actually reckon they bought back 30 plus, uh, but I'm comfortable to share that with you if you'd like, Ken, because it sounds like that's kind of what you're setting up at the moment. Let me know if that would be helpful. Perfect. Um, Tanya, let me get let me get back to you on that. I've I've got I've taken your details down there just to to reach out just to make sure I'm understanding it correctly. Um, Richard, on the permission side, I know I know they are talking about doing that at some point, but it, it's something at the moment that is in the Teams package for for people are wanting to to invite people in and um and yeah, just um yeah, not not have certain things showing. uh owen savo is asking to be added in on the workshop yeah i shouted uh, back and after 12 30 no problem oh you've already responded yet yeah. awesome we might um drop that there owen if, if you're yeah, right sounds good that. awesome guys so um been fantastic working through with you guys hopefully you got some value hopefully you got some good stuff uh let julian know if you want us back so that he can uh get on the right page and uh, we'll see where we go next. But again, like I said, completely no obligation, completely free. Uh, if you want to have a chat with myself or one on the team, use that link that's below. Uh, we'll send you the replay and uh, the offer stands for the next sort of two weeks. So uh, no worries. But um, yeah, here's to your success, guys. Here's to building a great business. Buy and make your time, making more money and making sure that you've got systems that run the business and good people that run those systems. So uh, uh, thank you very much for having us, Julian. Appreciate it. No worries at all. Thanks, Owen. Really, really, uh, really great, great stuff there. Great advice. So yeah, we'll we'll definitely do this again. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Really appreciate it. See ya.